In the light of the above, and as our custom is, we hold valedictory services in honor of those who have reached the retirement age of 60 years. One was held for Bishop Thomas Aremu just this past Tuesday at Ibadan. Another one was held at Adwekiti for one of the senior pastors. What we are doing here tonight is not new, but part of the set order in this system. Valedictory services like these is an avenue to congratulate the celebrant for a successful tenure in the service of this commission. Valedictory service like this is a platform for the celebrant to express his experience with God in the course of his service here in this commission. And most of all, a valedictory service like this is an avenue for the impartation of grace on the celebrants as he sets out to his new face of life so he can continue to occupy till Jesus comes. Someone say loud amen. amen. Further to this, someone may ask, after retirement, what next? This commission has a provision for elongated service scheme, which is an opportunity for those who want to continue in their services in this commission. And interested retirees have applied under this scheme. And up to now, over 31 retirees have been enlisted in that scheme to the glory of God and still counting. However, we must note that no retiree in this commission can hold any official portfolio because of the demand of duty in this commission. Therefore, the core tax of any retiree pastor under the elongated service scheme is the oversight function under the mission inspectorate service platform, which we call the MIS. In addition, there are a number of our retirees who have been connected and have stayed connected to this commission as active members of the church where they live. Those of them who are also in pursuit of the ministry they have received of the Lord have been very much connected to this commission as was observed during the 70th birthday of our father in the Lord, the Bishop David Yudipo, which held recently. By the policy of this commission, only the founder has a lifetime tenor, except where he decides to step down. Tonight, someone is returning with the grace for order and the grace for continuity in the name of Jesus Christ. If that is you, let your amen be louder. Praise God, fortune is my portion in 2024. Thank you. Let's have some silence. As they used to say in um, some of our traditional church where we were before, the Lord is in his temple. Let the heart be silent in his presence. The president and the apostle over this commission Bishop David Oedipo. Our very dear mother, Pastor Faith Oedipo. Co laborers, sons of the prophets in the house, all other protocols observed. I count it a great privilege given by my father, Bishop David Oedepo, and an honor to stand before this esteemed congregation who are gathered to honor us in this valedictory service. First, I give all glory to God who by election of grace found me faithful and enabled me to serve in his kingdom. 
on the platform of this Liberation Commission since inception. To me, adventure in ministry was not a subject of being desirous or having an ambition, but simply fulfilling divine purpose. Coming from an humble background, <laughs> under my parents, I simply found myself growing up in loving God and the things of the kingdom. My biological father of blessed memory was a lover of God, a lover of his kingdom. And tonight, my wonderful mother is also here in this service as well as my mother-in-law and a great host of our family members from everywhere. Secondly, I appreciate my spiritual father whom God has used tremendously in no little way to impart my life, my wife and I with grace till this moment. As a pastor over us, we have been well fed by the word of God. As a fine past finder, he has been used by God to guide us in the path of destiny. As a trailblazer, he has inspired us in the pursuit of divine plan. And as a prophet, he has provided for us adequate covering in the journey of life. Meeting with him, God's servant became like entering into a school and life transforming lessons have been learned. On this special occasion, it's my joy, therefore, to present this address, which I would like to begin by saying that there is no self made man in life. And even though God is the one who makes people, he does so through the instrumentality of men that we see and relate with. Today, I sincerely acknowledge that such is the story of my stewardship in ministry under the tutelage of my mentor, Bishop David and on the platform of this Liberation Commission. Greatness is not a thing to wish, but a journey to make by following, which by God's help, I've engaged myself since my first encounter with him in January 1980. Then I was 19 years old, or about to be 19 years old. Which I believe, from the foundation of the world, was orchestrated by the Holy Spirit to fulfill divine purpose. Today, people look at me with admiration as a full-fledged duplicate of grace that is upon the life of my prophet, Pastor, teacher, and mentor, Bishop David Oedepo. In a recently published book, in honor of God's servant, at the occasion of his 70th birthday, written by an erudite professor in Covenant University, titled Treasures of Spiritual Gratuity, to which I was privileged to do a foreword. I had remarked as follows. It is important to understand that learning is more valuable than earnings. This is because life in itself is a compendium of daily lessons. What you earn is for your pocket. But what you learn goes not only into your life, 
but into your future. For me and my wife, lessons learned so far has provided for us security of destiny. As it is the aspiration of every son, I stand before this holy congregation with a deep sense of appreciation to God and his servant that the spirit of the commission and the grace upon his life has rested evidently on me. As it was with Joshua under Moses and Elisha under Elijah which continues, which puts me in continuity in the path of exploits all the days of my life. As earlier noted in this address, my personal relationship with God's servant, which commenced even before the birth of the mandate, has spanned close to 45 years covering several spheres of life, including ministry, our nuclear and extended families, social spheres, etc. This relationship is quite extensive and deep, and we shall continue to be a part of it by God's grace as we, are, as we engage in post-retirement activities in full submission to the guidance of the Holy Spirit has taught us over the years by our fathers and mentors. Finally, to God's servant, again, the apostle over this commission, my wife and I want to say a very big thank you as well to our beloved mother, who has created an environment for us to serve God in this commission. To all members, to all members of the Council of the Ministry and its various extensions, the management, beloved pastors, great co-laborers, all administrative staff, and indeed all members of the winner's family, we hereby express our hearty appreciation. It's been a journey of building relationships with imprinted lasting memories all through. And to all co-laborers in other ministries, friends, and other acquaintances who have come from far and near to grace this occasion, we do not take your coming for granted. We pray that the Lord will abundantly reward you all and honor you in return. He will as well grant everyone super safety in your journeys back to your destinations. God bless the Living Faith Church worldwide. and all members of the winner's family. Thank you for listening with deep love from our hearts for all. Amen. All right, guys, that was a very powerful video there by Bishop David Abuye and the Mandate Secretary of Living Faith Church Worldwide, Pastor Hola B.C. Um, this video basically is an information and an answer to a lot of questions people have asking on social media. So after retirement, what's next? After retirement, what is Bishop Abiyah going to do? So this video was detailed through, brought together so that we can have total idea of the plans Living Church have for retired pastors and what they can do despite the retirement and it was stated that while you are retired you can still serve as a mission inspection pastor 
and being a mission inspection pastor in Minas, this means that you're going to be inspecting a lot of churches, a lot of things in Minas Chapel. And I think I love the way the standard is. And if you are someone that is very close to Minas Chapel very well, you understand that the demand in your office is so high if you're a pastor. And my earnest prayer for Bishop Abiyue is that God will help him to stand strong in this time in the name of Jesus and also giving grace for a new face in Jesus' name. All right, guys, God bless you and have a great time. Cheers.